Meet Ivory. My name is Ivory Bivens. A fashion industry boss lady and mother of three. I am an apparel technical designer, so in layman's term, I'm a fashion designer. Ivory is tired of her look not matching her level of awesomeness. I kind of look like I clean the offices most of the time. And she is fully prepared to do the work to change that. I don't have to look like I clean the toilets in order to look like I'm here to do a damn job. Ivory's current wardrobe is filled with oversized t-shirts, sweatpants, and men's clothing. Two decades that I am out of shopping for myself, even though it was size I was. I was buying the wrong size clothes. It is time to trade that tired stuff in for a sleek, badass wardrobe. <laughs> I need to find <laughs> what works for my body. The question is, will Ivory get rid of her supersized wardrobe? We're doing new things. We're trying to get into bigger and better things. Or will she fall back into bad habits and rob the world of her greatness. I purchased new clothes for myself. Why did I keep this? Find out in this week's episode of the Style Therapy Makeover Experience. Welcome to the Style Therapy Makeover Experience. In this series, I found 10 deserving women gave them a copy of my book, Style Therapy, some filming equipment, and let them go to town documenting their 30-day style transformation. I didn't get in the way. I didn't work with them personally. I didn't pick out their clothes. I didn't try to control the outcome because I wanted to give you an honest look at what it looks like to work through this book to find yourself in your signature style. So this series is going to show you what is possible when you have the right tools, the right attitude, and the willingness to do the work to transform yourself. Now, before we get into today's episode, I want to thank Sanctuary Clothing, who was kind enough to hook our ladies up with some gift cards so they could shop for their big reveal. If you're looking for casual clothing that's affordable and really, really cute, check out SanctuaryClothing.com. In today's episode, we are going to follow Ivory on her 30-day transformation. Y'all, I'm so excited for this week's episode. Let's check it out. When I looked at the application and I saw, you know, that you guys wanted to know why did I feel like I deserved this? The first thing I thought was, I shouldn't do this. There's somebody out there who's more deserving than me, who needs this more than me. Then I sat and thought on that and I was like, nah, fuck that. Because I always do that. I always do it. I always put everybody else before myself and I never give myself the things that I need. I'm going into my 40th birthday and I wanted to up my, my wardrobe so that I could look like a professional adult rather than a you know really young, messy person all the time because I don't think people take me seriously and I think it has a lot to do with the way that I dress. I just got the email that I got and I am like... I wish you guys could have been in the car with me to see me like screaming and punching. I am so excited, so ready to get to work. I am so pumped for this challenge. I cannot wait to start. It's week one and Ivory is about to start her style journey. Week one is devoted to self-discovery. We've got the seven day selfie challenge. We have all of the journaling prompts. And let me tell you something, Ivory goes deep. Girl is not messing around. You will see that in week one, week two, week three, week four. She is going for it. She wants this. She wants it so bad, okay? She wants the after, she wants the ahas. She of course, like everybody, describes the seven day selfie challenge as eye opening. Y'all are gonna love this. Let's check it out. There are a lot of journaling prompts for week one. It really brought up a bunch of questions that I never asked myself. Uh, I kind of have been robotically just getting dressed, going to work and not thinking about it, but there is actually underlying reasons why I'm doing some of these things. I like to work. 
I'm a worker bee. I like it. I like the stress of it. I like the running around of it. I like the problem solving of it. I like to analyze things. I'm extremely analytical. I was making myself appear like somebody who was here to do the hard work. I'm not a trendy, forecasty looking person. You see me, I have on my get down and dirty clothes that suggest that I am a on the ground, hands on worker. I don't have to look like I clean the toilets in order to look like I'm here to do a damn job. When it comes to improving your style, and you could just like write all these things down. And, and of course my weight has been one of them. I have three kids, you know, I'm bound to gain weight. I actually feel like I made it out okay on the weight gain thing because after I had my second child, I had bumped up to a whole 115 pounds. Now I'm coming in at 130. So I've gained 15 pounds over the, my oldest child will be 17 this year. Over the past 17 years, people have, have commented on the fact that I gained weight. I'm, I'm sure I keep saying it. So when I gained 5, 10, 15 pounds, you'll see it quicker than you see on somebody who's taller. And people have been okay with commenting on that. And so even though I pride myself as a person, I, I don't care what people think and all that kind of stuff, that type of shit starts getting to you. It really does. I had a friend, I was in a wedding, posted some pictures of the wedding. She commented, somebody from high school, damn girl, you didn't have a Spanx. The bad part was I had one on. So <laughs> my weight has started getting to me a little, which made me shy more away from clothes that were form fitting. So now I'm wearing these oversized clothes. I'm wearing clothes that look like I'm supposed to be cleaning the house in. And even when there are occasions when I know that I need to have something nicer to wear, the other thing comes up. And that thing is that in my family, too much money was spent on material things and not on responsibilities. That's how I personally perceived what was going on in my family as I grew up and I didn't agree with it. And so I feel like I internalized that. And as an adult, I shy away from buying super expensive or things that I don't think are necessary. I only really have focused on, I have to take care of my kids, I have to take care of my household, I have to pay my bills. What do I have to do? And so me getting a new pair of pants or a new pair of shoes is not something that I have to do. I was robotically just putting on clothes and getting dressed and I did not think about any of the stuff that I just said until these prompts. Like, why am I dressing this way? What started this? What is going on? My pictures, I don't think they're like super bad, but I still don't feel like I look like me. So I feel like I started putting on better clothes and I'm trying to figure out what my style is, but I still haven't figured it out. I was extremely disappointed in myself on the um, wardrobe checklist. I was like, do I own clothes? Do I own clothes? Like, I don't even know if you guys could see how little bit of checks are on here. Like there's a section for skirts. There's no checks. There's no checks in the skirt section. <laughs> a white cotton shirt. I don't own one. I don't own, everybody owns one. A button up white, I don't own one. Matter of fact, I had to go buy a white t-shirt. I just got one of those. Isn't that crazy? But because I only wear a uh, stretchy old jacked up stuff, I completely filled in this knit section. Oh, I've got sweaters and sweatshirts and hoodies. <laughs> That's week one. I'm, looking at everything, taking in my reflection. Current style is classic basics, very basic, uh, work appropriate clothes and boring. Um, to be very frank, I'm, I'm, I'm crass, I'm, I'm bold, I'm aggressive. That is my personality type, but I'm dressing like I'm an accountant now. So <laughs> that's where we are at week one. I'm about to get into this week two and see what that's about. It's week two, which means it's time to clear our path. Week two is another tough week inside of style therapy because we have to clear out all of the roadblocks that are preventing us from dressing as our best selves and living as our best selves. We're talking body image issues, money issues, um, other people's opinions, things that are standing in the way of our greatness. So Ivory does an incredible job of being super duper vulnerable and talking about an issue that I think so many of us women struggle with our midsection and how it tends to 
act up and prevent us from wearing certain clothes that time of the month. So yeah, we're getting deep. We're talking about it. Let's check it out. So I'm on week two of the challenge and this is my outfit for the day. And so I have never, ever, ever had a flat stomach. I've always had a little, a little curve out. Okay. Except for, you know, when I'm going through my, my time and then I get that heaviness at the bottom and that little, but, but other than that, I've always had like a teardrop stomach. And in week two, you go over loving the body that you're in and doing what, you know, feels right and looks right and just being okay with who you are. I have salpingitis, which is an inflammation of the fallopian tubes. And it's been going on for years. And what will happen is I'll be fine for weeks. And right before my menstrual cycle, just like anybody else, you start, you know, getting a little bloating and stuff. But if that salpingitis is reoccurring for me, my specifically my left fallopian tube will begin to swell up and cause me a lot of pain. So about Two days ago, I started feeling the symptoms that I usually get. Um, and halfway through the day at work, I was in extreme abdominal pain and just my stomach was bloated. But I was gonna power through because my outfit was cute. And then <laughs> the next day, still powering through. Today, I couldn't power through. And today I woke up and I stood in front of my closet and I was just standing there having a meltdown because I gotta find something that I could put on that doesn't hurt. The aftermath of my closet meltdown, um, I just kind of usually just put on whatever I think will not hug my midsection so bad. I don't know. I look like I feel bad because I feel bad. <laughs> and so um, what I usually try to do is just find anything, anything that I could put on that's not going to hurt my midsection, that doesn't feel too tight, that's not too constrictive, which is usually sweatpants, which is why I own so many. Really, I kind of probably just need a, a capsule wardrobe of fashionable, looser fitting clothes that I could fit during that time. Um, so that I don't have to look like I'm going through this horrible trauma and I'm having a nervous breakdown, um, you know, during this time every five to six weeks. As of right now, they can't do anything to help me. It's going to keep occurring. And I, I want to see a champion. I want to see somebody who can power through um, somebody who is strong because I know that I'm strong. I've been going through this for over a decade. I know I can make it through. So I don't want five days out of each month for me to suddenly be a different person. I'm still me. I still want to look in the mirror and see me. And I guess that's it. That's good. Instead of those t-shirt and jeans, and I did, it's a loose fit and dress. Got my sneakers on because I can't <laughs> bear to have anything. Still got my little pudge. Still got, still got my butt in the front. But it's okay, I'm not gonna beat myself up about it because there's nothing I can do about that. Don't beat yourself up about stuff that you can't control. But I look much better. Clearly, I don't feel better. But I also don't feel like <laughs> the world is over like I felt earlier, so. Get up, get dressed, do the best you can, be the best person you can. That's all there is to it. Week one was fun. Week two was loads of fun. So this week was really about loving your body, about being okay, you know, with who you are and seeing the beauty in yourself and figuring out how to style around who you are rather than waiting to become somebody else. One of the reasons why I don't like to wear form-fitting clothes it's because I gained weight. But ever since I was small, honestly, ever since I was maybe in middle school, junior high school, um, people have commented on the size of my butt. That's just 
it's weird, but that's just what has happened. And so I've done things to cover up. It was the 90s, so it was the style, <laughs> thank God. But I was wearing like super oversized clothes. I was dressed like TLC, who wasn't? Go when I got to college, that wasn't the style anymore. The style was like low rise, hip huggers, and just kind of really more exposing your torso and things like that. You know, J-Lo was really in style then. People wanted to see what you were working with and I wasn't really trying to let people see that. And so during that time, I went to college and I was still trying to hide behind these big clothes. And so um, part of my style roadblock is how I internalize people's over sexualization of my body and it makes me want to cover up more it doesn't make me feel powerful it doesn't make me feel like a bad bitch it makes me feel uncomfortable those kind of things are, are not things personally for me that empower me they don't make me feel good at all and so i went a little too far i went a little too far into the baggy clothes and for me that's just learning how to own my sexuality and really be okay with my body the way that it is and whatever people's perception of my body is their own perception and i should not be internalizing that other things that came up this week were just that like what are the words that express your style right and so i wrote down a bunch of stuff but what was really hard hitting for me and this is a pain point for me I'm short. I keep saying it, right? But because I'm short and I'm a small short person, people treat me like I'm a child. They really just interact with me as if I'm a dependent. They People that are taller than me, women that are bigger than me, especially women. And I'm a grown ass woman. Like, I'm not cool with that. I'm not cool with the smart remarks. I'm not cool with none of that. We live in a time where we all know now it's not okay to talk about people's weight because you don't know what's going on with them. Sometimes they can't control it. Why do you think I can control how tall I am? Why do you think that that's any different than discussing somebody's weight? Stop interacting with smaller people like their children. So now I have to make myself look bigger than life in order for you to treat me on the same level as you. I noticed that in my writing, that I have written several times in the different sections, like uh, three words for your professional wardrobe and three words for this wardrobe and three words. What are three words that you would want to describe how your wardrobe looks for these different types of occasions? Two words have stuck out. I want to look intelligent, but I want to look powerful. But I have an attachment to oversized men clothes that I wear to cover up my body. Like if you saw my closet cleanse, it was extremely hard for me to get rid of some of those things because they're like my, my shield. They protect me from people being able to see me. That's why I had double of some of my t-shirts and I had, you know, like really jacked up looking stuff that I was keeping. My eulogy was to um, my old worn oversized men t-shirts and sweatpants. Pants, I have. <laughs> look at these sweatpants. Look at this. Look at this. One is oh, the the draw cord is gone. I'm still rocking these, but not anymore. I'm thankful for the sweatpants. Their season has now come and gone, and we're gonna move on to some better fitting clothes that make me feel better about myself. So that was week two. Week one and two. So much fun. So much fun getting all this therapy therapy. That's, yeah. It's week three and we are having so much more fun this week because it's Style Awakening Week. This week, Ivory is going to develop her style type. She's going to draft her dress code. She's going to create a shopping list and so many other fun things in between. But I think what you're really gonna enjoy about week three with Ivory is her style type. She finds her style inspiration from the most unlikely source possible.
and her style type name is hysterical. So keep watching. This one's gonna blow your mind. So let me tell you guys something. <laughs> I sat out here this whole time for like 15 minutes shooting that damn confessional. Went back and looked at it and that joint was like, so guys, what happened the last time was? <laughs> so I'm a little behind. Um, some of these questions that she's asking and really pondering on what's making you behave in this manner and that's causing you to dress in a certain manner because some of the answers to your questions are going to be deep and it's not just one like who would you like to dress with it's not like that it's really getting to the root of how do you feel about money what makes you feel like that okay so now you're answering that question now you're sitting there like me stuck kind of like why am i acting like this going through those and really trying to figure out what is going on because you really want to make a change then you're gonna have to really put in the work you can't just breeze through all the questions breeze through everything and just be like well did day one now it's time to take a selfie no why are you dressing like that why are you doing these things because if you don't really sit and get answers out of it you're gonna do it again um, at the end of week three, I was on a shopping spree looking around my yard and I was like, damn, we need a lawnmower. And so I unconsciously stopped looking for stuff for myself and spent like five minutes scrolling through different lawnmowers, looking at reviews like, what am I doing? We do need a lawnmower. There's money for a lawnmower and there's money for me. And I have to learn to be okay with getting the things that I need. So having the book literally right there out of the corner of my eye while I'm doing this made me be like, hold on, what am I doing? Let me get back to that. Her virtual shop as we went absolutely fabulous. Um, I define my style as minimalist, edgy, classic. I don't like things that are overly ruffly and big and poofy. I like clean lines, which would be the classic. I don't like, you know, too many things, too many layers, which I guess will be more the minimalist side. And here's the thing, coming into this, I had said to myself, I wear so much black and white. I hate that I only wear black and white. I'm boring. Maybe I should pop some colors in. And I will tell you that I know this for a fact. I look damn good in pastels. I just really do. It is really brightening up my skin tone, make me look pleasant but I don't like pastels I like black and I like white that's what I actually like and so there's nothing wrong with that the whole point for me of this process is to become more of myself not to change into somebody else or who I think people want to see the other thing you're supposed to do is say who like give a name <laughs> to our style type so in order for me to to really make you guys understand how I came up with this, I gotta give you some back, background story about me. I am a nerd, a 1000% comic book sci-fi nerd. This is the She-Hulk that my brother bought me for my birthday. I have Grand's Pop, I carry is my favorite. And then I have back here, I have Pokemon, the black and white. I love Marvel everything, okay, it, DC, I don't care, I'm watching it since I was a little kid, I love it, I've seen every single Star Wars multiple times, every single Harry Potter, I can quote the lines, I know the characters that nobody don't know, you know what I mean, this is, this is my life, this is all I watch, everybody's like, did you see the new episode of The Bold Type, have you seen the blah blah blah, no, no, if they didn't fly, and laser beams didn't shoot out of their eyes. I didn't see it. I didn't. I'm not watching it. The person that I wanted to be when I grew up, when people ask me what I wanted to be, I wanted to be, I wanted to be Victor Newman from The Young and the Restless. This is what I wanted to be. I asked my mother what he was. She said he was a corporate raider. Um, and for the longest time, that's all I wanted to be, was a corporate raider. I love when he walked into the boardrooms. Do you know who I am? I am Victor Newman. And then all of you are out of here. This is Newman Enterprises now. Politics. 
And I don't care how much it costs. But when I'm through with you, Jack Armin, you'll have nothing. You'll be nothing. I will touch you! I wanted to be that person. He was a lot of power suits. He's the power suit guy. I loved it, everything about it. Even when he wasn't in power suits, when he was on his day off, he would wear like black tees with the leather moto jacket. Like he, he was killing it. The next person who really struck me as a child was from the 1980s Superman, General Zod. I see you are practiced in worshiping things that fly. Good. Rise before Zod. No. Kneel before Zod. With that low V-neck shirt <laughs> and those leather boots, I was like, oh, he means business. <laughs> Superman better watch out. And I was struck by that, the power and how he landed in planet Houston, okay? And had on those leather boots and that V-neck and he was confident with his chest hairs hanging out. And he just knew that everybody on this planet was going to bow down to him. I felt him on that. Um, Darth Vader. Y'all act like y'all don't, when that, dun, 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 brr, 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 when that comes on, and he walks through with that cape and them leather boots and them leather gloves. Darth Maul. <laughs> when he comes through with the backflips, and he's like, what now? Yeah, with the, with the whole black drapey leather cloak thing on some females for you i love i love storm with the black leather storm with the black leather vest the sleeveless black leather vest thing with the black leather pants that she had on the stiletto boots trinity from matrix these are my style icons i want to walk into a room and people be like oh shit ivory's here hide <laughs> I want evil theme music to play when I come through. <laughs> I want it to be a 90 degree hot summer day at the beach. And when I walk out with this cape lid on that I'm gonna get, I'm not gonna get one. For no other reason than the fact that I showed up, the wind starts to blow so that my cape starts to flutter. <laughs> this is what I want. This is what makes me happy. <laughs> and this is how I wanna look, which makes sense because when we go back to week two and we are talking about the words to define your look, most of my words were powerful, intelligent. I think I even wrote, and I wrote this because I was told this one time at work, um, aggressive, <laughs> intimidating. These are the words that I wrote down uh, as far as my look. So I'm, I'm pretty consistent in the book. I'm pretty consistent. So the name of my style type would be evil villain. <laughs> <laughs> It's my style type. I get to name it whatever I want. You know, I don't care. I want to be Darth Vader when I grow up. <laughs> it's week four, your signature style. Ivory made it to week four. I had no doubt that she would because she is putting in work for this transformation. This week, Ivory goes shopping. She tries on some clothes. She puts together some outfits. We've got a little at home fashion show, and she put together some really cute stuff. I'm quite proud of her. And we'll also get to hear from some very important fashion critics. Some critics who are going to critique her style before and now her style after in week four. Let's check it out. All right, so I've made it to week four. The cool thing I like about week four is the shopping but of course um there's actually like different um prompts in here to give you an example of how to shop for your style type um so mine was the minimalist the edgy classic which we're calling you know evil villain and some of the stores um i didn't know some of the brands i didn't know so i went and looked them up and what i did was i kind of just went in and starred next to them um, the ones that I felt really fit the look that I was going for. And I live in a beach town, okay? So for people that don't know this, um, most people assume like if you live in Utah, right? 
we all know that the fashion capitals in the United States are New York, Miami, LA, the major cities, right? The major players. You know, if you go shopping in those cities, you're going to find things that you wouldn't find in your own town. The thing is, is that that happens in every town, not just a major town. What you have in your store in your city is based on historical sales records for that city. So if historically shorts don't do well in March in your city, you're going to be hard pressed to find a damn short in your city. Okay. I know this and I still went to the damn store looking for edgy minimalists when I know that that is not what's going on around here. So when I got to the Nordstrom Rack, I live in a beach town. What do I find? Beach clothes. So there's a lot of tank tops and, you know, sleeveless tops, but they're just like blanks. They're, they're super basics. Um, a lot of like flowy blouses, a lot of linen, a lot of um, just like day dresses and sun dresses and things like that. The only hats they had in there were like beach hats, like literally. Uh, anything, I would say that the stores in this area are chock full of boho chic-esque clothes, which is not my style type. So um, I'm going to have to go online and kind of purchase some pieces. So I was able to get a couple of things. I went to the mall. I went to, like I said, Nordstrom Rack. I got like two things. Um, and then I put together some outfits. Um, I was really shocked. I was like, I have like a little capsule group here. I have like a little group of things that I can actually put on that I feel like I look nice and I don't know how everybody else feels about it but I feel like you know like I accomplished what I set out to do what I did also like is that when you get to the end of the book they have a uh, accessories checklist and then you find your accessories style type so the one I picked was elegant sophisticated it's just timeless pieces gold uh, diamonds silver pretty much just very classic clean lines and I think that really is you know what speaks to my personality type. So I did like that they went into that because accessories has been my nemesis forever. Even there was a, a part in there where you create your own um, formulas. Like you get examples of formulas and then you create your own formulas. And I, I wrote some down because I really, really, really got into the trying to figure out different formulas for each part of my life because that was another problem that I was having. So, you know, I would get it together for work, but then some of the stuff that I have is kind of more restrictive and there are days that I just can't do, um, you know, the tight on you clothes. I just can't do them and I wasn't prepared for those days. And so that's when the t-shirts and the sweatpants and things would come out. And so, um, you know, I was able to look through things and say, okay, well, I've got this nice New Yorker company, like olive green knit suit i could wear that with my sneakers and i could throw gold accessories on and i don't look like trash you know what i mean then i had you know different ones that we put together for i want to go out with the girls so i'm gonna I'm whip out the leggings and um, the blazer i was able to incorporate um, one of my my star wars graphic tees so that was really fun i will say oh my goodness i was tired after i tried on all those clothes i was tired so i'm glad like when you do it that's it that that's work like you have to put in work so it's better to just do it get it done take the photos write it all down so that you don't have to um go through that process right before you're supposed to go somewhere you know what i mean like if I, i'm gonna go out with my girls or whatever i could always come back to the book because then you print them out and you put them in the book so i can always come back to the book say hey what was that outfit that i had on before or i could just really um have my formulas like I don't have to have that exact outfit but I can there's a place where you write down the formula okay get a blazer get a tee get your liquid leggings get your boots you know what I'm saying I can pull any tee as long as it goes I just need the formula so that when I get stuck on those days that it's just a breeze it's no problem so I really like really 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 like that element All right, I have made it to the end of the 30 Day Style Therapy, 30 Days to Your Signature Style. 
And at the end of the book, it has a post challenge reflection and it asks, how satisfied are you with your personal style now? So I would have to give myself a seven. Um, I think when I started, I probably was probably around a four or five. When I started the style therapy challenge, what I was really trying to get to was dressing more like myself because I'm not an accountant. You know what I mean? I'm in the, I'm in the fashion industry, I'm not an accountant. So I wanna look edgier. I wanna look, you know, more like a fashionista. Not a fashionista, but more like I work where I work. Not that I'm, you know, like I work as an accountant. Anyway. So with that being said, I think I did make progress. I did, um, but you know, with everything, I didn't get to the upper echelon. I didn't turn into, you know, Grace Jones overnight. I still have a couple of, you know, steps and things to go through to get to where I want to go. So I would give myself a nice, a nice round seven um, on my style. I definitely feel like I have chosen some things that are edgier and that are more me that work in my quirkiness, my little, you know, love for anime and Marvel movies. I was able to bring that part of myself into my wardrobe. I definitely am starting to look around and say, okay, what about the nails? What about the toes? What about the makeup? You know, things like that. So that has happened in the last 30 days. Um, being okay with buying stuff. So when I went shopping, that's different for me. Where I said that with confidence, like I'm not going to wait for them to go on sale and go to a different store when they're right there. That wasn't me 30 days ago. 30 days ago, I'd have been like, well, shit. I'm just gonna never have to get those leggings. I'm gonna wait for them to go on sale. And then what I would do is they would go on sale and I would still make an excuse of why they're too expensive. And then they would go and then go and go until they were sold out. And I'd be like, damn, must have not been in the cards for me to get that. That has changed. My mentality around buying purchases that I want or need has definitely changed in the last 30 days. I'm okay with going in the store and saying, I came here for a white button up blouse. What do you have? If it's on sale, great. If not, is it reasonably priced? Can I get it? Then I'm gonna get it because I need it because I don't have a freaking white button up blouse. That is a new mentality for me. So I'm really excited about that. And I really was okay. I didn't have buyer's remorse. I didn't, uh, a couple of days later say, damn, I should have spent that money on blah, blah, blah. Like, I didn't think about it no more. Like, I literally didn't think about it. So I got home and tried them on. I looked good in it, started coming up with ideas. You know, I didn't, feel any guilt about that purchase so that is huge for me huge it says uh, how have you how have you changed since improving your sense of style and I said that I've become way more confident I'm more in command and when I'm in a room I fill up the space as I should because I am a commanding person I am I always have been but I wasn't allowing what was inside of me to show on the outside you're not going to go into this book thinking, okay, I look drab and oh my goodness, I'm just laying around. Let me get the book and at the end of 30 days, I'm going to be Beyonce. That's not realistic. The only way you're going to be Beyonce is if Beyonce was already inside of you. That's what this is for, to bring out the most powerful woman that's inside of you. This book is to empower the best of you. You are not Beyonce. I'm not Beyonce, but I'm a damn strong ivory and she definitely showed up after I did the work that I needed to do in this book. I finally am awakened and it's showing in my style. It's showing in the way that I'm carrying myself and the way that I speak to people and the way that I go after things that I want. And I'm honestly in, in the last 30 days. Do y'all see me? Like I'm out here killing it. That's how I felt when I'm looking in the mirror. And I don't know what everybody else is feeling when they look back at me. That's their problem, not mine. But when I look at myself in my mirror, which wasn't a thing that I was always doing, I feel good about myself. And that is fucking awesome. It's prompted me to go buy another book because I want to go from a seven. I want to get to the 10. You feel what I'm saying? I'm trying to get to the 10. So I'm going to do the process over again. I got the pictures in here for my seven day selfie challenge. I got the pictures from when I bought my, well, on my shopper's free and, you know, did that. So I can see the progression. I want to do it again. I came this far. I don't want to stop now. There's so much I want to do with this newfound confidence that I have. And I feel like somebody watching this is going to be like, Ivory doesn't have confidence. Ivory never lacked in having a big mouth. 
Be having confidence and having a big mouth is two separate things, okay? Now with the big mouth and the attitude, I also have confidence in myself. So y'all better watch out. Thank you so much for following me on my journey. Thanks to Lauren and her team. This was crazy dope. And I hope everybody goes out and get a copy because it works. Trying this on, I apologize in advance for how much I'm gonna be wearing this damn coat. Okay, okay. What do you think I should talk about? Uh, uh how your outfits used to be really bad. Like you used to always wear all black with some blue jeans and some um, black and white Adidas. And what do I look like now? Be beautiful. <laughs> and, 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 uh, and she got me a code that looks really good. So I can look beautiful like her. <laughs> and, um, her outfits, they look a lot more styled, more than what they used to be. Okay, wow. Ivory did such an amazing job over these past 30 days. I really... I'm so proud. <laughs> Great work, Ivory. So what I wanted to share before we close this episode is this work is progress, not perfection, okay? 30 days to your signature style for this piece of your life, for this piece of a journey. Anything related to personal development, to your style, it's a process. It's an evolution. So you're going to get a little better and better each time you go through. So Ivory gave herself a seven on her transformation, a seven out of 10, but I give her a 10 out of 10. Okay. Because of the work that she did, she put everything into these 30 days and sure, maybe looks wise, she's not exactly where she wants to be. But because she's a 10 on the inside, it's inevitable that her style will continue to evolve and progress to get her to that number 10, to get her to a 10, because she knows better. She understands her roadblocks at a core level. She already noticed over the 30 days that when she started to fall back into old habits, that she could quickly course correct and get back on track. That's a 10, my friend. That's a 10. Your outsides don't have a choice but to catch up with your insides, especially when your insides are that on point. Now, if your insides aren't at a 10, maybe you got the after of your outfit being a 10, but on the inside, you only got to a five, then it's only a matter of time before your style starts slipping down to level five as well. But when your insides are a 10, Outsides may be a seven, but it's only a matter of time. I also love how Ivory mentioned, she's doing this book again. Yes, this work is meant to be repeated. Get yourself multiple books, keep the old books so you can look back at how far you've come. Imagine if you did this every season, or if you did 30 days back to back like Ivory, imagine what you could change in the inside of your life and the outside of your life. So thank you so much, Ivory, for allowing us to come on this journey with you. I'm so proud, amazing. If you're ready for your style transformation, pick up a copy of Style Therapy. It's available anywhere books are sold and you can take yourself on this 30 day transformation. If you wanna take things a step further, join me and Ivory, and the rest of the women who have gone through the Style Therapy Makeover Experience, join us inside of Style Confidence Collective, my monthly membership where a community of like-minded women, we all work together to level up on our style and on our personal development. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you all next week for another episode of the Style Therapy Makeover Experience.